Please do excuse the fact that I'm in my pyjamas again. Hello hi everybody, how are we? So for today's video, I thought we could do some tips and tricks for your first Disneyland Paris trip, holiday, whatever you want to call it. So I know a lot of you guys are from America, so you're, I think a lot of you guys are from Walt Disney World people, I think I've got some Disneyland California guys. Um, very like only like 20% of my audience I think are actually like Disneyland Paris people um so a lot of you guys I don't think have been to Disneyland Paris so I thought this video could be good because loads of you guys have said you want to go to Disneyland Paris at some point or whatever and I just thought this could be a good video to do because there is a lot of differences between the American parks and Disneyland Paris that people don't really think about when they're planning a holiday so I'm going to talk about them today. Usually on this kind of video I plan it first and write down all my points in a notebook. I haven't done that today, I just thought I would like talk about it from the top of my head because that way it's just more free-flowing and I'll say them as I think them. <laughs> so anyway, without further ado, let's get on with the video. So the first thing that came to my mind is apps. Now I don't know about the American parks but at Disneyland Paris there's a few apps that you need to have and I highly recommend you download them before you leave home. Like the internet at Disneyland Paris there is free wi-fi there but in, in the main park it's only really around the castle you can get it and that's like it's only really good in the mornings like the later on it gets in the day obviously the busier it's going to get and so everyone's going to be trying to use it so I don't really like to rely on the park wi-fi the wi-fi in the village is alright but obviously you're not going to be in the village that much um, I don't know about the hotspot for the wi-fi in the studios though but I don't really recommend using the wi-fi to download stuff because it's not going to be that strong um, and just to be ahead of time and arranged download it before you leave or you can be like me who's you know been to Paris a million one times I never, I have it installed on my phone all the time and I have a little folder dedicated to it. Here is my Disney folder on my phone. You can see I have three apps in there. Um, if you're coming from America to Paris, you're only gonna need two of those apps. Um, let me put them in order, they're in order. So the first two, the first app here, that is the Disneyland Paris app. That is the main app. It's, I'm pretty sure it's gonna be similar to the app you guys have for, um, Disney World and Disneyland, um, I've never been on those apps but I'm pretty sure they're going to be a similar concept. Um, let's go on it. So yeah, here's the layout. It's a bit different than normal because um, obviously you need to register before you go, before you could like turn up at the park because you know and buy a ticket and go in. Obviously now you have to register so that's kind of a bit different on the app but it has the park opening hours and it has like what's on at the moment in the parks and how to prepare for your stay, what not to be missed. You can make your wish list so you can mark down what things you know you want to do at the parks. Um, what's the buy option? Oh, you can you can buy tickets on the app apparently. That's new. I didn't know you could do that. Um, oh, this is also new. They've created a profile. So you can write down your favourite things, your tickets that you've got, your annual pass, your table bookings, any other bookings you've got. So you can really organise your trip just on there. Um, but obviously if you're coming from America for your first ever trip, you're not going to have an annual pass. Um, for you, what's this? Okay, this is also new. Under the For You page, there's this little thing where it says, each visit to Disneyland Paris is a unique adventure. We'll help you create yours with tailor-made recommendations. Let's get started. I don't know what this is about. Okay, it wants me to sign in and whatever. Um, so basically I feel like that's going to be something where, I'm guessing it's going to be like a quiz or something. And they're going to make your recommendations, which is quite cool. Explore. This is the favourite part of the app. Ah, I'm sure it's just going to be the standard. Same as the apps for the other parks. So they all have their wait times. And it says, like, where was it? What rides are closed. So what are they? Oh, uh, the Pirate Galleon is closed. What's this? Pirates Beach is closed. I think that's just more for like social distancing wise they're closed. Oh we've got some more closures. Um, Frontierland Playground is closed. Again that's going to be for Covid reasons. 
Big Thunder Mountain is currently closed. Apparently it's meant to be reopened soon. <laughs> All my Disneyland Paris fans, you're never gonna believe this. Peter Pan's flight, look at that. 15 minute wait? It's never like that when I go there. It's usually like 75 minutes wait. Um, so when you click on each of the rides, it says what kind of ride it is. Um, so like this one is the Mad Hatter Teacup, so it says Family Adventure, 10 minute wait. Teacups is mainly a walk-on ride, so. Yeah, it's just like the same setup for studios as well. And something exciting. They've got the Avengers campus on there ready. Ah. You can also just see the village on there. And then it's got the hotels, Hotel New York, that's changing to Marvel. Got Newport Bay down there. Sequoia Lodge. Those three are your kind of more expensive hotels. So the Disneyland Hotel, which is the big famous pink one, that's your most expensive. Then Marvel Hotel slash New York and Newport Bay are your second most expensive. So those ones are kind of tied. Then it's Sequoia Lodge. And then Cheyenne and Santa Fe are your cheap budget ones. They're more of a further walk away from the park, but they're still like a 10 minute walk, so it's all right. And they all have their own car parks as well. And they all offer shuttle buses. Yeah, so that's that app. Pretty simple to get your head around. Um, Line Bertie. I feel like that's going to be something more complicated. Because um, I don't think that's something you have for the American parks. Basically, in the mornings, I think it's about half nine. Um, a lot of the meet and greets, especially in the studios, and a few of the meet and greets in the main park, you need to reserve slots for and then you'll get a digital ticket on here and then it'll tell you when it's ready to go um i think the slots open up about half nine and then you can book in for tickets olaf's one always goes out fills up really quickly i've still not met an olaf yet because he's so popular and like when he meet and greet came out like just after frozen 2 came out and so obviously he was going to be a popular meet and greet so yeah you just open up the app um this app isn't exclusively for Disneyland Paris, so when you're booking it, make sure you go on Disneyland Paris. It should come up, like, um, basically this app, Lime Bertie, is for all the theme parks in France. But So it should list them, when you come up onto the main search page, it should list them in order of what's closest to you. So for example, right now it's doing all the ones that are local to me, so at the top it's got... Air France in Lille, which is only a hundred kilometers away, apparently. Um, and so, yeah, for me, I'd have to search Disney Disneyland Paris. Um, oh, I'm, I'm gonna favorite that. So then it's there, ready. But when you're in the park, because this is something you'll do in the park. Um, it will come up at the top because it will be the one you're nearest to because you're in it. Um, don't try and book tickets online Bertie before you go. That is something you have to do in the park because that ticket is only valid for that time and that slot on that day they tell you. So you can't pre-book things. I know at Disney World you can pre-book your fast passes and your like reservations and stuff like that. But Lime Bertie, that's not how it works. It's an on the day kind of thing. And it does mean you can get a bit disappointed if you don't get the meet and greet you want. But um, there's a few, there's also an afternoon slot open up that not a lot of people know about. And it does the same meet and greets, does the same meet and greets, but not a lot of people know about the afternoon slot because obviously in the afternoon you're busy going about the park, whereas at half nine in the morning that's the only thing you're focusing on. So I do recommend checking, I think it's about 1 pm, but just do check throughout the day because sometimes if people don't turn up for their slot, they will then reopen it up for some more extras. Or if the character gets through, like if everyone's interactions with that character is really short and sweet and simple, obviously the character will work through them quickly. Because characters have their schedule that they're out for. Say they're out for three hours a day. If they sell out all their slots in the morning, but then work their way through them really quickly, and then say they've still got an hour left, they'll open up the slots for some more. And so the cast member who's at the beginning of the queue, they have a tablet and so they can mark off who's been and done their slot so they can work out if they can open up some more slots or not. So I do recommend checking Line Bertie throughout the day. Um, yeah, that other app I have that I will just mention, as I said, if you're coming from America, you won't need to worry about it. It's more of a British thing. Um, but a tip I do recommend as well, to not carry around as much cash 
with you try and do as much card as you can um it's just a lot easier and especially if you don't understand like obviously because it's a different currency altogether it's obviously the euros and if you don't understand like the trans the um exchange rate and all that it's just a lot simpler to do card um something else to remember my american friends is something that confuses me when i go to disney world is obviously the price you see on the shelf isn't including tax over here in europe everything is in tax included so the price it says on the shelf is the price you will pay at the till um so yeah i don't use my debit card abroad because obviously you have to pay a little bit extra to use your card abroad um because my debit card is only for uk only so i got the post office travel card um and then with that you get the app basically with the travel app um it's linked up with your card um, and to get into the app that is it's like a full security app as well because it is obviously linked with your card so it does have a password as well and i also have my fingerprint to it and so when you go into the app it'll tell you how much money you have on your card and the good thing with that card is so i currently have 80 ish euros left over on my card that i didn't use on my last trip that will stay on there until i next go abroad again or say if i'm not going to europe on my next trip so i won't need euros say if i'm going to what country doesn't use euros say if i'm going to sweden um i don't know what currency they their currency is but they don't use euros um i can go on the app and change it to what currency i need um and that's the cool thing you i won't have to go into the post office to change the currency you can do that all on the app so if you are going about traveling europe or whatever you can change it as you go and when i was getting the card from the post office the guy was like oh so if you decide to go to america on your holiday you can just switch it to dollars and i was thinking i'm going to disneyland paris for two days when will i just wake up and decide i'm going to go to america on this holiday <laughs> um but i understood this example like it's just that easy you can switch the currency through the app and it'll just immediately change on your card and so you can just use it wherever and it's contactless um so yeah those are all the apps you need so if you're coming from america i you need the disneyland paris app and the lime bertie app make sure you download them before you come and if you're traveling from the uk i do recommend going to your local post office and getting a post office travel card and then they will recommend you download the app as well so that's everything on your phone um now about the general park a lot of people's concerns about when they come to Disneyland Paris is I don't speak French, how am I going to get on? Um, the thing at Disneyland Paris, when cast members are auditioning for their jobs, I'm pretty sure they have to know at least three languages. Um, and so those are generally going to be French and English and then one other one. So I can guarantee you, I've been to Disneyland Paris 16 times, I have never found a cast member that can't speak English. Yes, they can't all speak perfect English. The English is a bit patchy in places, but you can get, you can communicate easily enough to them. I've never had any problems whatsoever. Um, and obviously as well, a lot of the cast members are from England anyway. So, you know, you can easily communicate with them as well. And in a lot of the, um, a lot of the cast members have badges with flags on them. So you know what languages they speak anyway. So it makes it a bit easier as well so don't worry about language barriers at Disneyland Paris everyone can speak English there and you'll have no problems as for like shows and rides and stuff it's 50 50 English and French so in shows and parades they all like do a bit in English and then do a bit of French a bit of English a bit of French and like even the bits in French you still get the gist of what's going on um in rides so like Star Tours it's a 50 50 chance you get a French or English ride, but if you get the ride in French, it's still just as fun. Um, things like Buzz Lightyear. Um, in the queue, the um, animatronic Buzz Lightyear, he alternates which spiel he does. He actually doesn't do French and English. He does like French, English, Spanish and German, I think. And he just kind of alternates which one he does. Um, but either way, you get the gist of what he's saying. Um, so yeah, it's very easy. You don't have to worry about language at all. Um, and like all the signs and everything is written in French and English so like on the menus it will be big letters in French and then the English will be in a little letter underneath but with menus and stuff there's always a picture next to it so you can work out by the picture if you can't quite read the English but everything is in English and French 
So there's really no need to worry about that because I know that is one of people's main problems. That they're worried that they're not gonna understand, but don't worry, everything's fine. Anything else, a difference between um, Disney World and Disneyland Paris, fast passes. So I know at Disney World, fast passes, I believe there's something you have to buy. Am I correct in thinking that? Um, and there's something, they're more digital things on your phone. Um, whereas at Disneyland Paris, we have paper fast passes and they are, all, and they're completely free. That is one thing that confuses people. My friend, when she went first went on her first Disneyland Paris holiday last year, she didn't get fast passes for any rides because she thought they were an additional cost, but they're completely free. Basically all like the main attraction rides, so Big Thunder Mountain, Buzz Lightyear, Star Tours, Hyperspace Mountain, Indiana Jones, um, Tara Terra, Ratatouille, all the like the main rides, um, kind of near to where the main ride entrance is. To the side of it there's going to be like a little booth thing and there's these, I can't quite describe them, they're like the size of a bin almost and they've got like a little screen on them. Your park ticket that you came in with, scan that, it'll have like a little barcode on it, scan it and then it'll print out a little ticket. Um, similar size to like your park ticket and it will say um, which times there's like a half an hour time slot on which you can come back to the ride depending on how busy it is like if you go during quiet season like sometimes when I've been in January your fast pass will be for like in an hour's time in the height seasons like in the middle of summer your fast pass can be for like in four hours time um, so it really depends on what season you go as to when your fast pass is. They are completely free. All you need is your park ticket that you got on with, scan it and you get one. The only thing is you only allow one out at a time. Um, but as soon as you've done that ride you can go get another one. Also the other thing is if you... So like with Ratatouille it quite often breaks down during the day. <laughs> it's quite infamous for breaking down. If you're, it's broken down during the time that you've got your fast pass ticket they will let you on fast pass once it reopens up because they completely understand. But if you tr if you generally forget you have a fast pass ticket and then you go to it like an hour later, they're not going to let you on it because they're, you know. Another thing people quite often have questions about is going from Disneyland Paris to Paris. Can would they be able to do that? Like if they're staying at one of the Disneyland hotels, would they be able to do that? Yes, you can do that. Um, I have never done it before because I whenever I go to Disneyland Paris I drive there so I'll, if I want to go to Paris I'll just drive into Paris um, but at Disneyland Paris there is a train station so you've got Disneyland Park here, Hollywood Studios here and then you've got the village here in the middle bit there's a train station um, and I'm pretty sure you can, that you can get a direct train from there into Paris and you can buy tickets at the station or I'm sure you can talk to the rece receptionist of your hotel and they can get you something sorted out like a taxi or something there are many ways you can get to Paris from your hotel and I believe in some package deals they do do like over here in the UK when you book a coach trip some coach trips offer the opportunity to have one day to have a coach ride into Paris so if you are booking from America that if you want to do that as well that's something I'd look into if you're booking with a package company look into if they offer you know going to Paris as well if not, that is something you can do because there is a train station in Disneyland Paris so you can easily just hop on the train. And something I just forgot to mention, when you come into both of the parks, um, either whether it's Walt Disney Studios or Disneyland Park, there'll be these by the entrance. Um, they do these in like most languages, so and make sure you don't pick up a French one or a other language one. They have British flags in the corner so you know they're in English. There's two different things. So first, um, the park's map, I'm not, I'm not going to open it because I can never do these things that back up, but is, um, it has maps to both the parks in it, um, so if you, pick, you only need to pick up one in, both, one in one park and it covers you for both parks and then it also has like, like where the toilets are and where everything is and so yeah, pick up one yourself one of those. And then also in the same sort of area it'll be these programs again it is a double use one so obviously this side hollywood studios this is from star wars season so yeah hollywood studios and if you turn it over whoa disneyland park frozen season and here it tells you all the show times all the parade times um i think it also has meet and greets like where you meet yeah it also has all your meet and greets in there as well and their times um, so yeah, this is something very useful to pick up as well. 
Um, also something to take into notice as well, talking about shows, it only really matters with two shows and that's Stitch Live and Disney Junior Live in the studios. They do do English and French shows at different times, but that is something you'll have to check outside the show. There'll be a big board saying next English show at such and such time. So yeah, uh, I can't really think of anything else. If you guys have any questions, do let me know in the comment section down below. I'm pretty sure I could cover them. Um, but yeah, if you guys would like to see any more tips and tricks videos on Disneyland Paris, if you have like a specific topic you'd like me to cover, do let me know in the comment section down below. Um, yeah, I hope you guys found this video useful and helpful. Um, and if you haven't been to Disneyland Paris, what do you guys want to do the most? Like, what's on your Disneyland Paris bucket list? I'd really be interested to know. Um, yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please smash that thumbs up button. And if you'd like to see some more Disney content from me, don't forget to subscribe down below. And while you're down there, ding that notification bell. I mean, you might as well. You're already down there. And I'll see you guys next time. Bye!